All right guys, video number two in the Super Bandit build series or assembly series. Uh, we are making some good progress on this plane, plugging away at things. So let's dive back in to our Super Bandit build from BVM Jets. Quick summary of last video, we got the front former area completed. We got the, obviously the main door uh, cut out and done. Former number two, which is right here, is completed. And that's what we did on the last video. We also did the unboxing, of course, as well, which was a big part of it. This video starts off with the main hatch, which is this area. It's a little bit hard to see on camera, but this area right here uh, is our next thing to cut out on this fuselage. So in the manual, we are at the belly hatch cutout access step and that is what we're doing next. So we're gonna get this outlined with masking tape, just like we did on the nose door. So we have got our bottom hatch cut out. Now, what I ended up using on this was a pull saw versus the Dremel. Reason for that, it is the thinnest cutout that you can get. So our gap is the width of the saw blade, which is like, like that right there, so nice and thin. So I've gone ahead and we've sealed all the edges. We sanded this down, sealed all the edges with some thin CA. We're gonna also seal the edges on the fuselage. So next step in the manual here, there's these little uh, elongated cutouts or marks on the fuselage. So we wanna get those cut out. And that I think is for an Allen key so you can do up your wing spar bolts here. So we'll get those cut out with a Dremel. So we have sanded out most of the inside of the fuselage from the front of the intakes back to about here. Now the important spots is where your formers are gonna go that support the wings. We've done the speed brake area, so that whole base. Now we are gonna be adding some carbon reinforcement to the intake cheeks here. And uh, this plane is going to be an absolute speed machine. So we're doing some special reinforcements on this one. So next thing to do is we've got to router out the, uh, the channels here for the wing spars to go into. So we'll use our Dremel and get that done. All right, so getting into wing fitting here, this is one of those spots that can take quite a while. Um, it may be hard to show you this stuff here, but you can see if you look through the root of the wing, there's a nice decent gap pretty much all the way down the wing. Our tip is fitting a little bit tight right now. So what I'm doing is I'm just lightly sanding the uh, leading edge of the wing at the, uh, at the root. So right there, just to make a better fit. So I'm just using a file, a bastard file, a really fine one and just slowly sanding this down till we get this fitting perfectly on the body. All right, last step for this evening is carbon reinforcement. We've got our first steps here to do. We've cut some pieces, I'll show you where we're putting them. So we're reinforcing the shoulder, so we're gonna run a piece like this, and then we're gonna run another piece up here. So it'll have a wrap around there, and then a strip coming in this corner, and that is just to stiffen up this whole area is the goal. Obviously we're gonna do that on both sides. We've sanded down the inside of the fuselage and we are gonna be using West Systems Epoxy to accomplish this work. Fairly straightforward, we just get it laid in, in place, brush on the, uh, the epoxy, trying to keep it as light as possible. Obviously we wanna minimize the amount of weight we're adding. Our carbon's been added on here. When you're doing this type of thing, you wanna keep the epoxy as minimal as possible. So I brushed it on very lightly in the area. We have one piece of carbon here, and then our second piece goes in this area where my hand is. So I brush it on very lightly, just enough to stick the carbon in place place the carbon and then just very, a very, very light coating on top. That'll give you a bit of perspective on where we put it right there. So we're gonna call it a night for this, let that stuff cure and we will return. So our carbon reinforcement worked out beautifully. This area is so stiff now, it is awesome. Um, that worked out really good. Previously that area was very flexible, even more so than like this right here. And uh, this is great, so happy with that. Happy we did it. Uh, the epoxy itself was just over 20 grams. The carbon's gonna weigh about the same. So we added for this reinforcing around 40 grams of weight, which is 
very minimal. All right, so we're moving on to our F4 and F4A former. We've sanded both sides of the former as per the instructions, and we've put uh, two of the inserts in there. What we're gonna do now is glue the carbon piece to the carbon laminated piece and get that in place. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thin CA and wick it into the balsa that is uh, between the two layers of carbon on that wide former. So we've done the, uh, the main spar here. We took this back out. Uh, we high sawed all of our backing plates in, and then we also put some screws in there as well, just to make sure that those don't turn at all. All right, so we've got the wings installed temporarily. Uh, this is all part of the manual, so we have put our spar through there, uh, bolted everything in place with our three bolts per side, and now that portion is done. I believe our next step that we're moving on to is the rear mounting portion here. Now the next thing in the manual here is F5, this back piece right here. Now let's chat about the differences or modifications we are doing to this former. So the stock setup in the manual has this former being used with these uh, plastic, we'll just call them plastic uh, clamps here. Now the downside to the plastic units is they are plastic. So I didn't make the metal ones. These were included with the kit. Somebody else made these guys, but this is one of the changes we're making. So the change here is the plastic ones have these little nut inserts that go in the back there. Actually, here's one right here. And they just kind of press fit in there. This gets bolted through the F5 former, and when you install the wings, you would do those two bolts up. Now the difference, obviously, with the metal one is it does exactly the same thing, but our C-channel here uh, is all aluminum, so it gets bolted onto this uh, piece of carbon, and then we've got two, uh, I think these are 440 bolts that go through here, that hold the carbon wing spar into the clamps. So much stronger, much stouter system. You can tighten these guys up without the risk of those uh, blind nuts, I guess we call them, pulling through. So the owner's got lots of experience with this aircraft. So we've got a list of modifications that uh, we are doing on the aircraft here. We've got some stuff listed out here and we will talk about this stuff as we go through it. But right now we've gone up to this point right here and we are moving on to uh, F4, F5. Now F4 we've checked for proper gap all the way around the former. So what that is, is you want a decent gap here around your former work. So when you glue this in, you don't have any pressure points on two reasons. You don't have any pressure points on the former pushing on the fuselage and you get enough glue in between the former and the uh, fiberglass fuselage. So we want to accomplish the same thing with former number five. The difference is that I want to get the wings set in place before we sand this out. So right now we've got really good uh, spacing near this bottom section here but our top part of our former right there is quite tight on the fuselage. There is zero side to side play and you may be able to see the fuselage spreading out a little bit. So what that's helping us do right now is keep this former in place, keep it nice and centered in the fuselage. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these wings taped in the right locations. So we're gonna tape the leading edge and the trailing edge and get that set in place. And then what we wanna do is we wanna put our C channels up here and work on those. So I'm gonna work on getting these wings nice and squared off to the fuselage. Okay, so we're doing things a little bit different with this F5 former compared to the manual, obviously because we've got the aluminum brackets. So I've sanded this side of the carbon fiber. Uh, the point of sanding it is around the perimeter. I sanded it so our glue joints stick. And then in this area, I sanded it where our aluminum channels go so we can uh, get those C8 or TAC, uh, TAC glued in place. And then we'll take this out and then we'll drill our holes. This will make more sense soon. Uh, one other side note here is we put a little flapper right there 
That little flapper covers the slots, uh, prevents the whistling on this aircraft, and you can still put a tool this way to get these front bolts right there. So what we're gonna do now is we've taped the wings in place, we've made them nice and centered, we've got a clamp holding the back side. Um, that's just one extra layer of protection here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some silicone lube and we're gonna put it all over top of the rear carbon wing piece. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the former in the fuselage like that. And we are going to install our C channels right to the edge end of the, uh, the carbon piece, hold that in place and just spot glue it with some CA. Once that's done, we're gonna pull our wings off, take this former out and get those drilled and mounted where they're supposed to go. So there's a shot of everything prepped off. We've got the, uh, everything installed. We've got our channels uh, clamped in place. We're just gonna put some medium CA on the top of each of those clamps, and then we're gonna pull our wings off and we'll be able to get those formers and clamps drilled out. All right, so we've removed the wings from the fuselage. We've removed F5 former from the fuselage. These two aluminum clamps are spot glued in place with some CA. Our front former here, our F4 and F4A former, before we took the wings off and when everything was nice and centered, I spot glued this with some CA. So I put one drop on each side in the middle and then we put one drop of thick on each location right here. So this former is temporarily glued in place. Next thing we're gonna do is we are going to drill out these four holes and install our bolts and nuts to go through those holes to clamp these clamps onto the F5 former. Okay, so we've got this whole assembly out. We've drilled holes, we've installed our hardware. The stock hardware designed for the plastic pieces won't work because they are too short. So we've switched it out and gone with three millimeter hardware and we've installed nuts and bolts on the back side. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Dremel and we're gonna get rid of the CA along here, along each side of the clamp and then we will get the, uh, the clamps glued in place with some high saw. But we will do that when we get this whole assembly installed and we have this part sanded out to, uh, to get the, uh, the whole F5 former installed. So we'll sand these parts out, we'll get the, uh, the clamps all undone and ready to go, and then we'll also sand this area out right here that was tight before, and then now it's gonna go on and uh, have a little bit of play in this area. Everywhere else had a little bit of space. All right, so we've got a nice little gap here created from sanding. If you remember before, this was very, very tight, so we're good there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all this stuff apart, get the, uh, the clamps glued, and then we'll start organizing getting the uh, F4 and F5 formers glued in place for the wings. All right, guys, and it is time for another episode of Tip time, and this tip time is brought to you by, whew, Trusty's busy. Trusty bent screwdriver. All right, so today's tip time revolves around high saw. Sometimes uh, if you have high saw that's a little bit older, I've even had brand new tubes do this, but when you uh, dispense the high saw, uh, I, I don't use the mixing nozzles very often, but when you dispense it, there may be little chunkies in there. Just take your heat gun, super simple, just the heat gun, I just apply a little bit of heat, mix it up while I'm uh, using Trusty here to mix up the epoxy and it works good, it's quick and easy. Uh, you can heat the tubes in warm water, but I find this works way quicker, way easier. So that's tip time for you. All right, so wings go back on. We've uh, installed the wings, they're just loosely fit in place here, you can see. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we are gonna get the front bolts bolted together. We're gonna tape and clamp the rear portions. The front ones should all line up perfectly because that former is temporarily glued in place. So then we will get this back end lined up. We will spot glue the former in place and then we'll get everything glued up. So we've got our wings spot glued in place with our formers here, the back formers spot glued in place. Now we're gonna take the wings off again and we're gonna get those formers glued. All right, it was a bit of a process, but F4 and F5 are all complete. We've got that all glued in place and uh, just give you a quick rundown here. So our C channels 
uh, for the rear portion are glued to the carbon. Carbon's glued to the fuselage. We added some high saw on the nuts on the back to make sure they don't go anywhere. They're also Loctited in place. And we've got a crap load of high saw uh, holding F4, which is the front former, and we've got it nice and tooled. So we are gonna let that cure. Uh, a couple little uh, points of interest here. So when you're putting high saw on the back side of this, you've got those buttons, the receiver buttons there. A little hard to get high saw in here, so I also made sure I put high saw in from this side, and it doesn't interfere with our opening for the main wing spar. And if it did, we could just sand that out afterwards, but we've got a nice joint there as well too. And uh, we are good. So we're gonna let this stuff cure overnight and we will return to this tomorrow. So it is the next day and we are, all of our formers are obviously nice and snug. And we are just checking the fit of the wings. I already checked the other wing and it fits absolutely awesome. And this wing I'm sure is gonna fit just the same. Yes, it does. So that is beautiful, fits awesome. Um, now when you put this in, the square channel on the back uh, is obviously tight. There's a little bit of play on the front, but that's because our flat carbon plate against flat carbon plate has some movement. And once you put those bolts in, it's in exactly the right spot. So that worked out absolutely awesome. All right, and if you guys are a fan of the lighter side of RC after dark, you know what I'm talking about next. If you have never watched the lighter side of RC after dark, I suggest you head over there. That's my other channel. Subscribe to that channel. And uh, what we do is we do a lot of this stuff. Uh, you get to see the behind the scenes. We do like two hour live sessions from the shop here and uh, answer your questions. You get to see a lot of the stuff that doesn't end up in the video basically. But in the last After Dark, when we started the Super Bandit, I asked you guys for some scheme options or scheme advice. Uh, now what we did is we got a few schemes by email. I'm gonna throw them up here on the, on the uh, screen as we go through this. And I'm passing those on to the owner. Obviously he's gonna see them on the video. And uh, if you guys have a vote for your favorite scheme, make sure you email them to me, thelightersideofrc at gmail.com. Chances are if we get enough of them, I'll throw them in the next video like this. And uh, if you have a favorite scheme out of the ones that have scrolled through the, the screen here, list it down below uh, and maybe we'll end up using that scheme. So comment down below with your favorite scheme. All right, so we are done this portion here with the wings. We are moving on to the speed brake assembly. So step number one here is we're gonna find our speed brake parts. And uh, that's the first thing we need to do. So let's get those parts laid out and start working through all of our steps. We've gone ahead and done step number one. So step number one is quite straightforward. You are, uh, well, we jumped ahead a little bit, but we installed the blind nuts just so we can get everything spaced properly. And then we glued these two plywood strips onto the actual base. Now all these plywood strips do is raise the servo up. So we're just gonna drill through uh, this direction to uh, make our holes come through on this side. And then next step is to install our two servo mounts. All right, so we've got our servo mount screwed in on the mount here. What we're gonna do is we are gonna flip it over. We'll just take a little bit of thin CA, drop it in the hole, and that will secure everything nicely and it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, so just following the instructions here, we've got uh, quarter inch blocks and you run a spare piece of wire through there and then you take your hinges and you're going to get them uh, spot glued in place. So we will do that. This is a little bit of a kind of a tricky setup. Just trying to make sure that we obviously get this nice and parallel to everything. So we use a little bit of kicker. Give it a little push on the back side. Hopefully none of it went through. Nope, looks like we're still good. And then we'll just do the other side here. Looks like it worked out well. Except we glued that block in there. Perfect, so we're just a little bit tighter on this side, but I think that is going to work out good. Essentially what happens here is the part that actually mounts to the speed brake gets bolted on like this, 
and the speed brake operates with the servo. So um, this should work out perfect. So next step here is we drill through uh, the holes. Now there's multiple holes in the carbon piece there. So we uh, will pick the two that are furthest away from each other, drill those out and install screws. So we've got all of our screws tapped on the side here and installed. Next thing to do is the hinge system on the air brake. So this is how it's organized. You've got one air brake piece with this tall uh, standoff. The other one's flat. This is what actuates uh, from the servo. So obviously this one goes on the side where the servo is going to be. So what we need to do is we need to tap all four pieces of carbon, all four hinge points with a 256 uh, tap. So our air brake actuation system is all created here and it worked out good. Next step in the manual is to cut the air brake out from the bottom of the fuselage. We've got our air brake all outlined with tape. We're gonna use our thin Dremel disc and get this cut out. Uh, the little squares in the front here, those get Dremeled out to determine the amount of angle that the air brake can get based on how those carbon rods or carbon arms come out. So we're just gonna ignore those for now and uh, we'll get this cut out. All right, so we got the speed brake all cut out. Uh, that worked out really well. It's a nice, accurate fit in there, and we'll have some good... Whew. Next thing in the manual here is to put our poly-ply strips on each side of the air brake. So left and right side to support the air brake. So we'll flip the fuselage over and get those areas prepped and ready to go. So we've got our poly-ply liners on each side. That turned out beautifully. Uh, the fit is awesome, that looks good. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drill out uh, 1 8 holes on the three locations. You've got two dimples here, and there's a little mark on the center line of the fuselage right there. So we're gonna get those drilled out next. Right, so we've screwed in our actuating system. We've done our little cutouts here with our Dremel. We can get lots of movement there, no problem at all. So next step here is we get the air brake taped into its a uh, happy place. So we're going to get it set up like this. Then we're going to use some masking tape, flip it over, put some CA on our hinges just to temporarily hold them in place. And then we will check our movement on the air brake itself. All right, so a couple little tricks and tips while, uh, while we're working on the air brake here. We are done the air brake. We've got lots of movement available. Probably have about 80-ish uh, degrees uh, of available movement. So a couple things when you're cutting this out, obviously our, our hinge or pivot point is at the front edge here. So it's important that you think about, you'll need extra clearance in this area. We have adjusted this slightly. So I made this nice and tight and I knew that I was gonna be adding extra clearance at the front of the air brake. Now the back of the air brake, when I cut that out, I was holding my Dremel like this. So at about a uh, 20 degrees off 90, so maybe a 70 degree angle. And that's how we cut the back side. So the reason we did that is because I knew I would have to slide this back as much as possible. We also have our main wing spar right here as well too. That's very close to this cutout. It runs right on the edge. So I kind of ran the, uh, the cutout like this. And uh, that's how it ended up working out. We had to add a little bit more space in this section, a little bit of a, a space right there, but this worked out absolutely awesome. So we're only temporarily glued right here. So what we're gonna do is mix up some high saw and get, uh, get our air brake uh, pieces glued in place. All right, so it's the next day and we have our speed brake is all complete. Now, the one thing we're not gonna do is we're not gonna put the servo in place now. We're gonna save that for when we actually uh, build the plane or put all the electronics and stuff in. So we've taken all of our speed brake parts, put them in a bag marked speed brake, and we will set these aside now. All right, it is time to get serious and it is hatch and latch time. So. I guess canopy and main hatch time. This is gonna be a bit of a process to get these finished. I'll try and share as much detail as possible. So a couple important things here. Number one, we've got uh, Bob Violet sign this kit. So we've got a couple changes here. The molded in lines for the hooks are crossed out and replacements are marked. You can see here. 
Now, the only issue with that is our canopy doesn't line up. So the front holes there, they line up to the old ones. The mid ones don't line up to anything. And the back ones line up to the old ones. So that is a little bit concerning. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. The first step here is we need to get rid of our raised portions. So we've got this line right there. We've got our seam line, our seam line here, seam line there. So that needs to be getting gotten rid of. We've also got a molded line right here. It kind of starts off at about three millimeters and then just eventually goes to nothing. We need to get rid of that as well too. Um, so those are all some of the things that we need to do in preparation to getting these guys mounted. All right, so we've done a little bit of pre-work here. We've gone ahead and sanded all of the areas that have different joints and stuff between the, uh, the front and the main hatch there and also on the front here. I sanded a little bit of the seam just to drop it down a bit so we have a good visual of the actual um, bump there for when we're fitting the front of the canopy. Uh, the, there was a cross brace installed on the canopy hatch. I've taken that off. So it was taking this canopy and it was squeezing it together too much. So it wasn't actually lined up properly on the fuselage. So now that we've taken that cross brace off, when we get this canopy installed, like that, uh, the spacing side to side is perfect. So what we're working on now is the fitting of the canopy. So this is a bit of a delicate process. Just take your time with it. Uh, so there's a bit of a ridge on the front end here. And when I look on our sides, we've got a bit of a buildup on the fuselage right here for about one inch. And that buildup is right in this area. I'll mark it out for you here. So it's about there. To there. So this area is a little bit higher. So when this canopy is sitting in its happy spot here, like that, that little ridge is preventing the front edge and the rest of the canopy all the way down from sitting down flush. And it's also preventing this ridge from being nice and flush on the leading edge. So this is the stuff that we want to get rid of right there. Obviously we have to be careful not to sand out the other areas. And it's exactly the same scenario on the other side. All right, so front canopy is where we're focusing on now. We've done a bunch of sanding everywhere and we've got a pretty good fit. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to start installing our hooks all along the canopy and then we'll do some final fitting probably at the end. Now, first one we wanna do is our leading edge one and then we'll start moving our way backwards. So what I've done here is installed our front hook uh, we've just temporarily put that in place with CA. That's what we're gonna do with all of our hooks. We're gonna get them installed temporarily, or I guess tack, install them, uh, tack weld them with some CA, and then we will have the ability to adjust them if necessary. So I've marked where the hook lines up on the fuselage. So we're going to install a notch here or a hole and that's going to uh, be smaller than we need it to be and then we'll slowly adjust that. All right guys, so the manual shows here this whole area is cut out. Now I'm not sure if they're wanting us to cut that out, but our fuselage came with this area filled in. So I'm gonna leave that area filled in. I don't have a problem having more support in this area. Uh, what it does though, is it does create a bit of extra work for our front hook. So I've made our hole here for the front hook. Uh, the canopy fits in there. We know the location and we've got a little bit of play side to side. So the up and down of our hole is perfect because we're, if we come back a little bit, we're loose. And as we go forward, it starts to tighten up. So right now we've got the layout of our opening that we need. We just need to tighten up the sides a little bit. So, and this works out good. I'm gonna put some tape back here on the back side, and we're gonna fill this area with high saw, fill the back with high saw. So it's gonna create a, a bigger area for the hook to actually hook into. Uh, if we did end up cutting this out, then all we do to, take, to make this notch was to take a file and just file straight up. Uh, and make our little notch and then make the notch bigger. But because we don't have access here, this is going to be, I think, the best way to do this. And again, I wanna keep this extra structure in here 
nothing wrong with that at all. So you can see there that we have put some tape in the back for support, and now we'll shove a bunch of high saw in there, let it cure to tomorrow, and then we will work on our groove with a really small bit. So we've got our high saw that we filled in here is all cured, it's the next day. So what we're do doing is we're gonna take a diamond bit, a diamond Dremel bit, and now we are going to get our, uh, our opening or our hole cut out, but we're gonna keep it nice and small width-wise. Our height is good, it's just the width that we wanna slowly adjust. So the goal is to make it big enough so uh, with the diamond bit, so we can use the file to size it properly. And then the other benefit of doing this is if I reach on the back side here, now there's a big lump of high saw, uh, kind of as wide as my finger basically, that uh, gives this whole area more support. So we've got our front little hole done there. I'll give you a close up of it. And uh, that worked out just beautifully. So we have a nice tight fit there. I've got a temporary uh, one of the mid hatch hooks installed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install these one at a time. So one, two, three, four, five, six of those guys. Uh, the front two, I've checked the marks. They line up perfectly. I just measured the width here of the, uh, of the holes in between the, the two there. The mid ones are in the wrong spot, but they width-wise they line up. The back ones are in the right spot, but they're not the correct uh, width. So we do need to fit these one at a time. So we're gonna take a Dremel 409 bit, the skinny bit, and we're just gonna put a very thin slot in the marked out area, and we are gonna check these and fit them one at a time. We've got two hatch hooks already done, and essentially what you're doing is making this opening just wide enough so this hook will actually fit in the slot. And then you can adjust the slot uh, left or right, depending on which position it needs to go to. And then for finer adjustments, you can put a little bit of CA on there, spray it with some kicker, and that adds just a little bit of thickness in the direction that you need to go to. So these guys, as of right now, these front two fit beautifully. So very, very nice fit there, that is awesome. So we're gonna move back to the mid ones. Again, we'll just do one at a time and then we'll do our back ones. All right, so we've got all six of our hatch uh, hooks done and uh, that is for the side to side position. Now what we need to do is we take these wood uh, support spacers, they get glued on the underside. And then what happens is we do our up and down fit. So the hook sits against this wooden spacer and we have the ability to uh, adjust the fit of the canopy with sanding down the wooden spacer. So we're gonna get those glued in place. So guys, we've spent quite a few hours here getting this fit and I'll show you what it fits like. So our fit is really good. On the, uh, on the canopy, so easy to get on. Now we're a little bit tight. You can see by this front seam here, if I take my hand on the back, push forward, it is a beautiful fit all the way around this canopy. So as a last step tonight, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put, so these are all just held in place right now with some CA. We're gonna put our aero epoxy or high saw on the back side of all of our hooks. So six hooks in total. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to get the front canopy installed, push it forward all the way, tape it in place. And that is my little trick to getting these canopies fitting beautifully. So what's gonna happen is those, uh, the aero epoxy is gonna cure in the right spot for those hooks to be in the right position. And by the morning when this cures, it should be perfect. So I'm gonna mix that stuff up. We're gonna get installed, get this taped in place. And that is going to be the final step. All right, and there's what she looks like in the final step with everything done. So we do have a little bit of touch up here to do, which we'll do later on when we fit up the wings. Uh, there's really nothing we can do in this area to, to make this any tighter. Uh, so we've got a little bit of sanding to do. We've got a little uh, little trick from Kelly to fill in these areas with high saw, but uh, overall our fit is really good no matter what. So that looks awesome. All right guys, and that's gonna wrap up build video number two of the BVM Super Bandit. Uh, slow and steady wins this race. 
We finished off with getting this canopy uh, really well mounted in this aircraft. Next video, we are continuing on in the manual and that starts off with the main hatch. And then we move into the hatch cover on the underside and we just keep working our way through that manual. Thank you guys for watching the BVM Super Bandit build. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you list them down below. If you have any suggestions on color schemes other than what we talked about in this video, make sure you email them to me, thelightersideofrc at gmail.com. And if you like any of the color schemes that we showed in this video, comment down below with your favorites. So thanks guys for watching and we will see you in the next video.